Hey guys, Andy here, and today I'm going to do a little get ready with me. Um, I'm going out of town today, and I have a new concealer that I wanted to try out with you guys, so I figured I would just do a little get ready with me, and we could do that together. So if you wanted to see how I got this look, just stay tuned. And as always, if you like a little bit of makeup, unboxings, and a little bit of horror sprinkled in, please consider subscribing, as I would love to have you here, and let's just go ahead and get on into it. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go in. We're gonna just be using what's in my shop, my stash, and a lot of my project pan items because that's just what I've been reaching for. So this is the Complex Culture Anti-Pollution Blurring Primer. It looks like this. Packaging is gorgeous. This it's so Complex Culture, if you don't know, is like a offshoot brand of Ipsy. It's not a bad primer, so like this is the texture. It's got like an off, it's almost like a milky pink. It doesn't really have a scent. It feels nice on the skin, like it sinks in really nice, but I don't really feel like this primer does anything. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. And I just don't need blurring primers. Like, Everybody has pores, everybody has texture. And that's just not, it's just not something that I'm into, which is why like, as soon as I got this and I tried it, I was like, oh well, this is a primer that like, it's fine. And I think if that's something that you're looking for, you would really like this. Because it does do a nice job. It's just not. It's not what I'm looking for. So, like, I wouldn't purchase this. But I'm going to use it up. And it does feel nice on the skin. But I'm just going to go ahead and give that a minute to sink in before we go in with foundation. Also, don't mind the weird placement. I hung this cork board finally because I have had this cork board for months and just hadn't hung it, but it's December, so I'll be getting rid of that calendar and like that's where the calendar was, but I didn't want to get rid of it because like I still need it, but my new calendar is a desk calendar. So for foundation, I've been I'm using now the NYX Bear With Me Serum Concealer because I did not know this only has a six month shelf life. Probably because it's a serum. So I have mine in the shade vanilla, which when I bought this didn't realize that that was going to be it's a perfect shade match for my skin and I really like like one shade lighter like I like a brightening concealer still so I figured since I just finished up spoiler to my empties video um if I post this I don't know if I'll be posting this before or after I post my empties for the year but uh, if I do spoiler I finally finished my NYX Born to Glow that I had been working on for the last mm, few months. Like, it was, it wasn't in a project, it was like my unofficial project pan product. But I figured I would just try and use this up as a foundation because I really don't want it to go bad on me. Um, and I like it. And like I said, I have it in the shade Vanilla. And I think that it's nice. And I've worn it as foundation once or twice now. And it gives me like skin tint vibes. Like, 
It feels really hydrating on the skin because, you know, it's a serum. So... And I'm looking out because of the shade being my exact shade match for my skin. But yeah, I just don't want this product to go bad on me. And I'm not a huge stickler for, like, expiration dates with makeup, but I'm trying to be better about my cream products. And since this is a serum, I assume that that's why it's a six-month expiration date. I haven't had it open that long, but still. All of my other concealers, which... I haven't had open very long either, but they have 12 or 18 month shelf life, so. You're just, I'm just going to use this as my foundation. And I figure using, as, using it as a foundation will use it up fairly quickly because that is not as it's, its intended purpose. And I, cause I use about four, five pumps of it, two per each half of my face, and then one extra, just to even out the redness on my cheeks. And then any extra, I just dab out. So I'm just gonna finish finessing that, and we will come back and do my one new product concealer. Now, I had also used up my NYX Born to Glow Concealer, which was my one, like, super brightening, radiant concealer. So, I picked up, this is the e.l.f. Flawless Brightening Concealer. It's the one in the, like, cookie pen. And I have mine in the shade. Where are you going to say what shade you are? Fair 10C. I do hate... The clicky packaging, first off. But I think the shade match is a really good shade. Like, it's obviously a brightening concealer. So, and I know this has been out for a while, but I have, I've never tried it. So let's blend it out and we shall see. I remember trying the camo CC cream, like the original when that first came out. And I did not enjoy it. And I was debating on getting the hydrating one but like it just it has so much product in it I didn't want to get it and not like it because I like a really radiant concealer so I saw this and I was like you know what this really sounds like what I'm wanting I don't love the packaging but I do like that unlike a squeezy tube, it's a click pen, so it's more controlled than like how the NYX Born to Glow concealer packaging was, because like, 
as much as I love that concealer, the Dofa applicator tip was a nightmare in my opinion. That blended out in 2.2 seconds. And obviously, we're going to do a wear test today because, like, we're going out of town. We're going to TJ Maxx and doing shopping and stuff. So, I can definitely let you guys know in a pinned comment, like, how it wears. But, yeah. So, we're going to move on to powder. And I'm currently, so I am not a pressed powder person, but I'm trying to use up this little sample that I have and this is from Pure Cosmetics. It's the 4-in-1 Pressed Mineral Makeup and it's the Broad Spectrum SPF 15 in the shade Light LN6 which I just hit pan on it. Oops. So I just take it on a powder puff. These are the little triangle ones you can get from Amazon. Excuse me. These are the ones you can get from Amazon, so I just take it and we are going to powder puff everywhere that we put concealer. Just so that we get, we don't get any creasing. And I really, really am enjoying, enjoying using a powder puff for this step. If you don't know, if you haven't been following me for this, uh, following me for any sort of time, I have oily skin. I feel like this really helps my makeup's longevity. It helps keep my oils at bay. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish powdering. And after I powder with the powder puff on... The concealer points, I take a fluffy brush and just powder the rest. So I'm going to do that and we will come back. Alright, and now for cream products, I'm going to use my Fenty bronzer, my matchstick in the shade Amber. And I just draw this directly on the skin and I'm taking, this is a BH Cosmetics number one brush. I've been loving the shape of this. And we're just in circular motions. I'm gonna blend, blend that out. I love how effortless that is as like a contour. Like I wanna get that stick in an actual bronzer shade because I just think it's so effortless. For an actual bronzer, I'm going to use the NYX Wonder Stick, and I have mine in the shade Universal Light. And I'm just ever so gently, just that little bit. I wish I could have gotten this in the shade Fair, but they did not have it for like ever. And I'm just taking the same thing, and I'm just going to work that into the skin as well. Alright, and then for cream blush, this is the Lottie London and Vampire Diaries cream blush in the shade Witchcraft. It's a pH color changing blush. This is in my project pan. And I am just, I love this shade. And I pat this out with my sponge. And I just go in with my finger. I feel like that gets the best application but I just think that this is so pretty like since it adheres to your pH like I know this is all the trend right now but I really do think that it's just so gorgeous of just a flush of color so I'm gonna finesse that and we will move on to highlight and then for highlight I'm just using the highlight side of the NYX Wonder Stick
And then I'm going to spray my face with the Milani Gold Shimmer Spray. We can move on to powder. For powder, I've been using, this is the Profusion Immune Girls Uglo Glen Cocoa Palette. So it's their, it's the Volume 2 Face Palette. So I'm going to use all three of these shades. But I'm also going to mix in my Wet n Wild SpongeBob Highlight because this is in my project pan. And these two highlights, I know they don't look like they will pair well together, but they do, trust me. And this bronzer, like, I thought when I first, I got this palette as a free gift when I placed an order on Mercari. Like, I didn't know I was getting it, it just showed up in the box. Which I thought was really sweet, but I thought it was going to be too dark. But it actually works for me. And I do like it. So I have been enjoying using it. So I'm just going to bronze up my forehead. And then I take, which this is a Glam Brush T126. And then I'm going to take the a Concealer Perfecting Brush to do my nose contour. I'm just taking a BH Cosmetics number three brush for the blush. And then I'll show you how we mesh the two highlights together. Okay, so I take the Wet n Wild SpongeBob highlighter first. And I always do highlight on my finger. So, like, obviously that's gold, right? So let me put the gold one on. So then I'm going to go ahead and take, this is the shade White Gold Hoops, which is more of, like, a champagne. And I'm just going to blend the two together. And it creates this gorgeous, like, candlelit glow that I would just think so pretty. Because it tones down the the like stark gold of the Spongebob highlighter. And yeah, I think it makes it much more wearable. All right, so for eyes, I'm gonna prime with my NYX Ultimate Eye Primer here, which I'm almost out of this. Like we're running low. And I really enjoyed this eye primer. Like, I've really liked it. And I just buff that out with a sponge. And I'm going to be using the ColourPop Fade into Hue palette. I'm going to be sticking into the blue and purple row column. And I need to use just a second here. my ColourPop Super Shock shade Bay, which looks like her. And Bay is metallic eggplant with a navy flex. So I'm gonna go off camera and I'm gonna do this high really quick so and figure out what I'm doing. And then I will come back and we will do this eye together. All right, so this is what we're working with for mattes. I always do one eye with mattes and then the other. Um, I should have primed this eye before I got on here to start telling you what we're doing, but I like the like little bit of celestial hoopla we got going on. I think it looks nice. I don't know. I I like it. So 
we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into it. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the shade Zeitgeist on my very outer corner here as I throw my Project Pan lip gloss. And I'm just going to not get that in the way of your of the camera here. I had to build this up a couple times because it is the darkest matte purple here. So I'm just using this like angled brush. I think it's perfect for the shape of what I'm wanting. And then I am just gonna bring that dark purple up a little bit so it's, you know, the outer triangle here. And then I'm just gonna drag it onto the outer third of the lower lash line. Next, I'm going to take the shade Majestic, and we are just going to go right on top, on that top edge, and just drag it in a little bit more, just making that purple a little bit more vibrant like that there I just didn't want the purple as dusty and I'm gonna take that on a flat brush too and just fill in that purple now we're gonna go into the shade iconic this bright blue on a very small blending brush and I am just going to take that shade, starting where that purple is, and I'm just going to put that in my crease, all the way to the inner corner. And I really want to deepen that color up, so give me just a second to finesse the shade. And on a fluffy brush, I'm gonna take the shade Take It Easel, this light blue, and we are just going to blend out the edges of that blue. And I'm really just going to take it to the edge of the blue Just so it's not as harsh. And then last but certainly not least for mattes, I'm going to go into the shade Selfie, this purple, on the same fluffy brush. And I'm just going to blend out the edge of the purple over here. And blend out the lower lash line. So, yeah. Next, I'm going to take my NYX Glitter Primer. And mine completely broke. Like, the tube ripped. So, I potted it into a little pot here. So, I'm just going to take this onto a brush. And just apply this all over the lid here. And then I always do my shimmers with my finger. So I'm going to take the Super Shock shade in the shade Bay, which, oof, and I'm just going to put that on the outer edge here. That shade is gorgeous. I definitely don't get enough use out of this dark shade in my collection, but she is just stunning. 
And let me figure out what I want to do for the inner. I'm thinking I want to take Kaleidoscope, the blue glitter on the lid, and then express this purple shimmer for my inner corner. So, ooh, that is so pretty. And then the shade Express. Oh yeah. Oh, that's so pretty. I'm just gonna go ahead and really quick do the other eye off camera and then we will finish everything up. So I was thinking for my waterline using this Tres Duce gel color in the shade royal i'm gonna try and get this to work and then i'm just gonna use my clinique high impact mascara and then i'm thinking a black lip so i'm going to do all of that and i will be right back with the final look before i do lips tell me this blue liner is in everything here's the finished look all i'm gonna do is spray with a little bit of my all-nighter just to set it in And yeah, I think it turned out absolutely beautiful. So I will put it in the comments and let you guys know how the concealer wore. I think it looks gorgeous and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.